Welcome back to Heretics and Heroes. Today, I'm gonna show you how I painted up this little guy, my newest platoon commander. This was a fun little kit bash that I put together a while ago. Unfortunately, I didn't get that on camera, but the eagle-eyed among you may be able to spot all the different parts I used to make it. Let me know down in the comments if you think you figured it out and you'll get the satisfaction of being right. Sorry, I don't have a prize. Let's not waste any more time talking and let's get to painting. I've already primed this guy in Xandri dust right out of a rattle can, and so we'll go directly to base coating. Going from left to right, we'll be using English uniform for the jacket, we'll be using Iraqi sand for the pants, we'll be using Talarn sand for the small bits of armor on the glove and near the boots. We're gonna paint all the metal stuff black because metallic paint always goes over black the best. We're gonna do black green for the shoulder pads. We're gonna do Russian green for the weapons. We'll use flat brown for the belt. And then finally, we're gonna do the burnt cadmium red for the beret. This is what he's looking like after just the base coat. Now, we're gonna do some shading. For the first batch, what we're gonna be doing is two parts Reichland flesh shade, one part Agrax earth shade, and then three parts Lamian medium. The medium is actually very important here. It is the secret to getting a smooth application of these washes without staining the base color too much. You can use water if that's all you got, but I find that the medium creates a much smoother result. This mixture is going to go on all of the clothing and onto the face. For all the other bits, we're just gonna go straight Agrax, again, thinned down 50-50 with medium. No need to show that on camera. Once all that is dry, we'll go for our first round of highlights. I'm using the base color English Uniform, both to bring back some of the color of the jacket, but also as my first round of highlights. For the subsequent rounds of highlights, we're gonna be mixing in a little bit of buff to that English uniform. And we're just gonna bring up all of the raised areas that would be getting the most sunlight. It's definitely best to focus on the areas that are actually facing upward, but a simple edge highlight will do. You'll notice that I'm being a little bit scratchy with my highlights. This is on purpose. I wanna give the jacket a little bit of texture, make it feel like it's seen some use. For the pants, we're gonna be doing essentially the same process, except when we get to our brighter highlights, we'll be using Elphic Flesh. Next, let's move on to the beret. We have it base coated already in burnt cadmium, I'm gonna bring that up into flat red, then into scarlet, and then if we need it for the highest of highlights, we'll use some clear orange. I'm doing a lot of stippling throughout this highlighting process because I want the end result to look like worn felt. For the shoulder pads, I am bringing back a little bit of the original black green to create a subtle gradient. Then we're gonna go ahead and just do some edge highlighting, starting with flat green and going up into Elysian green. For the power fist and the bolter, we're gonna be doing much the same, except I'm only doing one round of highlights with Strachan green. We're gonna be weathering these areas later, which will help create the extra definition that you would normally get from another layer of highlights. For the belt, we're gonna go back in with a little bit more Agrax because I like my leather to be dark and kind of shiny. We'll then go ahead for some edge highlights using red leather. We'll then bring that up into Scrag Brown and then finally, I'm gonna use Sunny Flesh Tone to do a little bit of a wear pattern. You can just do a little bit of dabbing and scratching. We're gonna give the boots a very quick highlight with some gray mixed with some white. You don't have to spend a lot of time on this. Nobody's really paying that much attention to the boots. 
I'm gonna very quickly off camera fill in all of the metallic areas. There's nothing special going on there. It's just a base coat. I'm gonna give the gunmetal sections a quick wash of Agrax. And then we'll give the gold sections a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. You don't actually need to dilute this as much. I like that little reddish tinge that it gives to it. We'll do some quick edge highlights using gold. And I'm also gonna get the surface of the eagle on the gorget. We'll do our final round of highlights using silver, and I'm focusing only on the areas that are facing upwards towards the sky. Using that same silver, we'll go to the gun and both edge highlight it and give it a little bit of weathering at the same time by putting some bumps and scratches into it. I am now gonna freehand on my regimental insignia. If any of you caught the first color schemes video that I did, you'll know that my regimental insignia is nearly a ripoff of the Salamander Space Marines. I'm choosing to freehand this rather than just steal a Salamander's transfer sheet because I just don't like transfers. I find them incredibly fiddly and I like to draw. If you prefer transfers, by all means, go put on a transfer. Unfortunately, I can't teach you how to freehand. There's no special secret to it. You just have to learn to draw. We're looking pretty good so far, not much left to do. Next, onto the face. First, I'm gonna start with some dark red in the recesses of the eyes. We want some of that red to remain after we've painted the whites of the eyes so that it sort of outlines them and makes them stand out more. Now, I'll just go ahead and do the whites. You may be able to see that I kind of flubbed it there and put too much white. That's all right. I'm just going to go back in with the red and scale it back. Now let's dot the eyes. The secret to dotting eyes is to just make sure that your paint is flowing well and have a brush with a really good point. And it doesn't have to be an incredibly tiny brush either. The one that I'm using is a size one. If you're having trouble with dotting eyes, maybe you don't have a brush with such a fine point, something else that you could look into is getting yourself like a half millimeter brush pen. They work really well because you don't have to worry about the consistency of the paint or the point not being fine enough. Now onto the fun part, time to paint the rest of the face. The face, if it's visible on your model, is almost certainly the focal point for people's attention. So it really pays off to go the extra mile. I'm starting off by putting thinned down burnt cadmium red into all the recesses on the face. If you wanna do this with a wash, you can absolutely do that as well. Don't be afraid to use washes as a precision tool. I'm now gonna add some blue in. I've mixed it with the base flesh color, Cadian flesh tone. We're adding it underneath the cheeks. Little color variations like this add a ton of life to your faces. And in this case, it also implies a little bit of five o'clock shadow. We'll go even darker with that blue immediately under the cheekbones. Next, we're gonna start bringing up the flesh tones on all the raised areas. I find that painting faces is a little bit like fighting a war against yourself. You'll probably have to go multiple rounds of bringing down the dark areas, raising up the light areas until you find the exact right balance you're looking for. 
Doing the mustache is gonna be pretty easy. I'm just doing some vertical lines, starting with black, then moving up to a medium brown, then a slightly lighter brown, and then a slightly lighter brown on top of that. The trick is to do these lines without really any regard for each other. So that way you mimic hairs of slightly different color simply laying on top of each other. Next up is the gemstone in the hat. Painting gemstones pretty much always follows the same basic formula, which I'll show you here. First, we'll start with a circle in a medium dark blue. Then we'll do a slightly smaller circle in a very dark blue and put that in the top right or top left. We'll then do a very small circle and put it way up into the top right, and that'll be our sun reflection off the edge of the stone. Then down in the opposite quadrant of the shape, we're gonna bring in some bright blue to represent light being reflected from within the stone. At a core level, that's it, just circles within circles, but you may wanna add a few more layers to smooth out the transitions. This method will work for basically any rounded shape, so it's great for spirit stones, the eyeglass on space marine helmets, uh, sniper scopes, whatever. We're in the home stretch now, let's get to weathering. I'm starting off with a mix of Death Guard Green and Iraqi Sand for the light weathering. So the small bumps and small scratches that are enough to chip the paint, but don't actually get to the material underneath. The way I like to do my weathering is with a combination of dabbing motions to represent impact damage, and then short strokes to create scratches. It's always best to focus on the corners and edges, places most likely to bump into something, but other than that, you should really try and be as random as you can. If you overthink it, it might end up looking unnatural. So ideally during this step, you should just chill out, listen to some music, sit there, head empty, just dabbing and swishing your brush. Weathering is one of my favorite steps because it's kind of cathartic in that way. And it's also really when the model starts to come alive for me. You can do a little bit of storytelling with the way that you weather. I went pretty heavy on the weathering on the power fist near the fingers and the knuckles. I wanted it to look like this particular commander has absolutely punched the living hell out of some enemies of the Imperium. We'll go ahead and just repeat the same process on the shoulder pads. Next, we'll take some of the dark green of the shoulder pads mixed with a little bit of black, and we'll put some scratches into the insignia to help it blend in with the rest of the model. Now, for the most heavily damaged parts of the armor, I'm taking a mixture of black and Rhinox hide, and we're gonna dab it onto the sections that are most heavily damaged on the weapons and armor. It's best if you do this sort of contained within the light weathering that you've already done to represent damage that has gone all the way down to the base material. Now let's get the basing done. I'm laying down a little bit of Armageddon dust, quick wash. I'm doing two rounds of highlighting, first with Zemisi Desert to add some color, and then finally with Iraqi Sand. For the rocks, I slapped some Nuln oil on them, and I'm just dry brushing them in a light gray. Now we block out the rim of the base, and we're at the finish line. I didn't go crazy with this guy. I didn't use any insane blending techniques. I kept things pretty simple, and yet I think the result speaks for itself. This is something that anyone can achieve as long as you master the fundamentals. And helping you master the fundamentals is the ultimate goal of this channel. Thank you all for making it to the end of the video. This was my first full painting tutorial. So please let me know how I did down in the comments. And let me know if you have any suggestions for what I should do next time. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And until next time, I'll see you on the tabletop.